Hello and welcome to the second tutorial that looks at using Flash CS6 in order to create our animation. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is we're going to be looking at, if I just get the mark scheme here, we are going to be looking at tweening. Now tweening is really really useful when you're doing an animation. So let's go to Flash and let's open a new action script 3.0 document so here's my stage as you can see here and what i'm going to do first of all in the last video we talked about properties now all the images shapes text any objects like that have properties but so does the stage so if i click on the stage and click on my properties what you can see here is that i can actually change the size of the stage I can also change something called the FPS, which is frames per second. And as you can see, as I hover over it, it gives me the tooltip, which tells me I can change the frame rate at which the animation plays. We'll go into that in more detail later. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to change the color of my stage. And I can do this absolutely any color that I want. It's totally up to you what you do. Just for the time being, though, I'm going to do a light gray stage. So anything in the background now, will show as light grey. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to choose a shape. So if I click and hold on there I'm going to choose a circle tool. And what I'm going to do is drag out holding the shift key while I, while I drag this out to make a perfect circle. And there I've got a purple circle with a red outline. So if you click on properties you can see if I click here and double click. If I just click first of all on the circle it only selects the inside and I can drag that away so that they're separate objects. But I don't want to do that, I want to have it with the stroke attached or the outline. So I double click and it selects both so I can now move that around my stage. But what I want to do first of all if I just click on properties you can see that this is a shape and I know that because I've drawn it from my shape tool options. But when you create a shape, it's important to know that it is actually a vector. Now, the difference between an image that you would save from the internet or take with your camera and import into Flash is that that would be a bitmap image, which means that it's actually made up of pixels, individual tiny pixels. Now, a vector shape is essentially just blocks of solid color. Now, Having a shape allows me to do a shape tween, which is the first type of tween that we're going to look at. Now, what I will do, as you can see here, if I just delete this and insert it again, I've got a blank keyframe here on my timeline in frame one. If I insert the shape, hold shift again to drag a perfect circle, I've now got my circle, which on the timeline, as you can see, this is my circle and it's going to show on frame one and that's inside a keyframe. Now we can't actually make any changes to the movement or animate the shape unless we do insert another keyframe. So it's important to remember you can't animate until you insert another keyframe. So what I could do here is if I click on frame two of my timeline, I'm going to right click or on the Mac, it's control and click, and I'm going to insert a keyframe. Now what this does, think about this like a flip book. We all know what a flip book does. You draw something on one page, then you go to the next page and you slightly change the drawing. So if it was a stick man, you could slightly move the arm so that it looks like he's waving and you would do that gradually on every page. So think of a keyframe like a new page in the flip book. So on page one, or frame one on my timeline, my circle is in this position here. So what I could do, if I click in this frame, and I slightly move the circle, what you'll see when I move the playhead is that I've got animated movement, just like that. And obviously I could do it again. If I insert a new keyframe into frame three, what it does is it automatically duplicates whatever is in the keyframe before. So it's going to be in the same position here, 
and I can simply click and drag and move it a little bit more. And I could do the same again, F6, and move it slightly. Now, when I say I'm pressing F6, what F6 does is it means it does exactly the same thing as right clicking on the frame and inserting a keyframe. It's just F6 is the keyboard shortcut to do that. So I'm doing F6, it's gonna copy whatever was in this keyframe, and I just slightly move it there. And again, I could just keep doing that, repeating and repeating, slightly moving each time. And that's called a basic stop motion animation. So you can see doing that, inserting keyframes and slightly moving it, my circle now has movement. So that's an animation. But what we can do with tweening, if I just go back to the mark scheme, tweening here, literally, as the name suggests, what I can do is, is let's say I delete all of those keyframes. I'm going to highlight all of these, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to remove the frames. So I've just got my circle in frame, in frame one. Now, if I insert a keyframe to frame 24, and I press F6, what you'll see now is that it's extended that keyframe all the way to frame 24. So what I could do now is I could right click anywhere inside this, this particular, in between the two keyframes. It doesn't matter where, I could do it on frame two, right click there, or I could right click in the middle, or I could right click at the end. And what I need to do is I'm going to create a shape tween. And what you'll see is that it inserts an arrow in between the two keyframes and it also turns it green so that we know it's a shape tween. If you use other tweens, they have different colors to represent that. So what it does now is if I've got my circle in this frame here and I've also got an identical circle in this frame here at frame 24, what I can do is move this one just like we talked about before with stop motion, but I'm actually this is going to be the end of my circle moving to the end of all my circle animation. And what the tween does is it simply fills in all the frames in between and it does it perfectly. So you can do it a lot better than we can by inserting individual keyframes each time and moving it slightly because it automatically does it for us and it will do it perfectly. So if I play the animation, there we are. And that's a shape tween, but you must make sure that you're your objects or images are shapes, but you tend to find that if you inserted an image from the internet, you wouldn't be able to do this because it's not a shape, it's a bitmap image. So you can only do shape tweens for shapes. And there's other things we can do with this. Let's say I want at this frame here, rather than my circle moving to the end, what I want it to do, if I just delete that, if I click in this keyframe and I go and I use the paintbrush, what I can do, I've got some options down here where I can change the shape and the size of the brush. So what I'm going to do is just use a standard one and I'm going to increase the size here. And if I just write the word hello, not very good unfortunately, but uh, you could take your time over that. But this is just an example. And what will happen now is from frame one, where it's a circle, or keyframe one, all the way to frame 24, it's now going to fill in the gaps and change it from a circle to the word hello, because the paintbrush is essentially creating shapes. So if I press enter to play from, the, from frame one, it actually does that whole animation for me. And that would be really difficult if we were doing that ourselves using individual keyframes. So that's a really, really nice type of technique there. So shape tweening must be done with shapes. And if you're not sure, let's say I click here on my text and I can hold the shift key and select all of these individual elements at the same time. Or what I could do is just highlight them all like that, click and drag over them. If I go into properties, you can see that they're shapes. And so, if I click in properties there, you can also see that's a shape too. So, it must go from a shape to a shape 
in order to use a shape tween. And that's a really nice technique there. And the reason that I put the keyframe into frame 24 is simply for the reason that if we look down here, remember earlier when I looked at the stage, it told us that the frame rate was 24 frames per second. So if I've got 24 frames here, we know that if it's playing at 24 frames per second, that will take a second for that animation to happen. Simple as that. So we can change that if we want, but I would leave it as the standard of 24 frames per second as it plays a lot smoother. The less, if you lower the frame rate, the frames per second, you'll notice that it's kind of, it starts to get a bit more jumpy and a bit slower. So I, I would leave it at 24. Oh, <laughs>